A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a discovery of a very unusual organism that we've never seen before anywhere that seems to be able to breathe nitrogen. But in this case, it does this in a very bizarre way by basically creating a kind of a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria that's now slowly turning into its own version of mitochondria. Now, this might sound complicated, but in essence, this very strange single cell organism discovered in Switzerland may actually be one of the most important discoveries in evolutionary biology because it's going through some really important changes and is forming an entirely new type of an organism. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's first discuss our cells and various eukaryotic organisms that we know very likely went through something very similar approximately 2 billion years ago. And here this is basically an extremely brief history of evolution of mitochondria. And we know everything here started approximately 2 billion years ago when a somewhat unusual archaea that's today referred to as the Asgard archaea was able to establish a somewhat intriguing symbiosis with some kind of an early bacteria that was able to efficiently produce energy by consuming oxygen. And though at first this was just a bacteria living inside another cell, at some point the bacterium started to actually lose a lot of its own genes and eventually atrophied, becoming entirely dependent on the cell. And then, after hundreds of millions of years of evolution, it became an organelle. An organelle that still possesses some of its genes and is still able to replicate and even guide the cell where it lives, but that can no longer survive outside of the cell and depends on it directly. We've actually discussed mitochondria in a lot of detail in one of the videos in the description, including some of the most incredible discoveries about how they actually can control our cells. This was of course the birth of eukaryotes. But today we know that eukaryotes, especially the ones containing just one cell, that we often refer to as protists, are also extremely good at forming symbiosis with other bacteria and even other cells. In many cases, bacteria enter the cell and basically live there providing something in return, with the protists basically serving as a kind of a protection. But here symbiosis can be very different. Sometimes it can be inside the cell, in some cases it's outside of the cell, and in some cases it just provides certain services but is not permanent. Or the usually it has one purpose, either nutrition or defense. And while well, a few years back researchers actually discovered at least one species of single cell organisms that are actually going through this evolution once again and are acquiring a new organelle that allows them to breathe in very different ways. The study about this should be in the description, but in essence this was a really important confirmation that symbiosis is still evolving and can actually still take a lot of different pathways depending on the conditions where cells live. But despite so many discoveries in the past, we've never seen one thing. We've actually never seen a cell replacing one of the organelles because something else has been discovered that's even more efficient. Which is potentially what was just discovered in a very famous lake in Switzerland. Here this was a discovery from Lake Zug, a lake that contains a lot of still water, or in more scientific terms, very stratified water, where a lot of layers don't actually mix and the bottom of the lake does not have a lot of contact with the top. And so this isolation actually creates extreme environments on the bottom of the lake, in many cases completely lacking oxygen. And even though there's no oxygen, there's a lot of methane and a lot of different nitrates and other nitrogen compounds. And so back in 2021, a team of scientists led by John Graff was actually trying to discover some kind of a methane consuming bacteria, mostly studying nitrogen conversion, where completely by accident they discovered a bunch of genes that they've never seen before. Here this involved some kind of an unusual pathway that involved respiration, but in this case using nitrogen compounds. And at first they had no idea where this came from, but eventually they found the culprit. It turned out to be bacterium, but living inside another species. A species of ciliates, or single cell eukaryotes, or basically protists, that unlike a lot of other cells, can easily move around and usually very fast, and do contain much more complex structures compared to a typical bacterium. Here the ciliate sort of looked like this. But once they analyzed the species, and once they used a lot of scanning microscopes to discover what's inside, they were sort of surprised to find out what's been hiding inside. Now normally these types of ciliates use these bacteria for food. They basically just consume them, destroying everything in the process. But in this case, the ciliate, instead of eating bacteria, somehow managed to inject it into its own body, with several of them living inside as partners. And because of this, these protists could now survive in oxygen-free environments simply through the process of nitrate respiration. With this new species now referred to as Candidatus azoamicus ciliaticola. Here the name basically means nitrogen friend. 
referring to the friends living inside. And one of the main reasons this is kind of unusual for biologists is because previously, every single complex cell we've discovered in oxygen-free environments survive through the process of fermentation. But that process is not very effective and not very efficient, and so in those cases, a lot of those cells usually cannot move, and especially cannot move fast. Here though we had a ciliate that's able to live its normal life, able to travel really fast, and is possibly one of the fastest organisms in this environment, and the only reason it's so successful and able to do all of this is really because of its friends inside. Instead of drawing energy from fermentation, it creates a lot of energy by breathing nitrogen, which of course was very surprising, and this evolutionary process very likely started at least 200 million years ago. Although it's not entirely clear if this basically started as some kind of a parasite living inside, or just some kind of absorption through the cell, but this evolutionary process was definitely quite successful. But moreover, these unusual cells don't just produce energy, they seem to actually act just like mitochondria. In other words, they actually seem to share a function, which means that this unusual protist possibly completely replaces mitochondria with something entirely different. This has never been seen in nature before. Which also means that eventually this unusual bacterium will most likely follow the same path. It will lose a lot of its independence and a lot of its function, and eventually just turn into a new organelle. It's not one yet, but it's probably going to get there eventually. And here, because this is symbiosis based on respiration and the transfer of energy, here this is a really important discovery. Actually, for a lot of different fields. For example, for astronomy, this might help us understand how various bacteria could potentially survive without oxygen in extremely nitrogen-enriched atmospheres. Now, technically, Earth is also nitrogen-enriched, but here we do have oxygen. This bacterium, though, can actually thrive in a lot of different places that don't have oxygen. But apart from that, there was also a really important question. A question that was asked back in 2021, but has now been officially answered in 2025. How exactly did this organism that potentially evolved 200 million years ago ended up in a lake in the middle of the Alps that very likely only existed for just 10,000 years? In other words, do these organisms exist elsewhere? And how many of them are there? And well, the new study by Dan Spath and his team potentially answers many of these questions. Because here, once scientists identified the genes required for all of this, they were able to use various databases to discover how common this organism is on the planet. And here this was based on a search for very specific genes discovered in a lot of different surveys based on these really massive public sequence databases that very often contain millions of different genes. These are usually produced when scientists collect various samples and then conduct a genetic analysis of everything discovered in the sample. And interestingly, the same genes were discovered in thousands of different locations, and actually everywhere on the planet. They were even discovered in the Arctic. And turns out they can actually survive everywhere too, not just lakes, but even wastewater and even oceans. Moreover, they seem to have discovered additional species in this group, basically now naming this new genus, with the new name being Azosocius, which means nitrogen associate. But interestingly, unlike that previous discovery, a lot of these additional species seem to also contain a lot of other genes and thus a lot of other functions. For example, at least one of them can also breathe oxygen, which means that it still contains mitochondria. Which basically confirms that at least some of these species here evolve differently, especially if they seem to live in mixed conditions. But all five of the species are defined by their ability to breathe nitrogen, specifically nitrates. Which actually means that all of them possess an ability to remove various nutrients, giving them the ability to essentially clean up a lot of organic waste, but at the same time very likely also produce various greenhouse gases, for example, nitrous oxide. But because this is basically still a brand new discovery, we really don't know much about them yet, and we don't really know their effect on the planet or exactly what they do here. We just know that they exist, they seem to be very successful and have been successful for at least 200 million years, and in some sense, they could also be perfect organisms to survive somewhere else out there. Any planet with a lot of nitrogen. But here it also shows us something else really important about Protus, or eukaryotes containing just one single cell. They're extremely good at making friends. Depending on the conditions where they live, they seem to always find a way to survive by creating symbiosis with something else. And in many cases, they seem to be able to do this all over the planet. But here the biggest question is still, how exactly do they do this? So was this a parasite? Was this some kind of an accidental injection? Or do these protists have an ability to basically absorb things when they need them? and just keep them inside their body. 
Either way, super exciting discoveries and something we'll discuss more in some of the future videos, especially once the researchers discover what else is going on here and what else these unusual proteins can actually do. And so until then, thank you for watching, check out previous videos on similar topics in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this show on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.